Well guys, it's uh, October 28th. I thought I would give you a view. You can look out the window. So uh, there are the mountains. There are some palm trees. And right over there, if you look just a little bit more, a fulfillment center slash warehouse. Well, I'm a little bit tired today. I just came from the gym. I haven't been running a lot, so I've been doing a lot of the walking and the Stairmaster until the day I decided I'm gonna try to go run intervals of two minutes and rest for 50 seconds. So it kind of took a little bit more out of me. Don't worry, next time you see me, I'm gonna have my hair shaved. I'll be looking good for you. But let me tell you, I went to the post office and what did I get? I had two checks, one for $165 and one for my security deposit in the amount of $58. I paid $500 for the initial security deposit. And I didn't care because I, I know I moved out that place. I mean, they should have renovated the apartment anyway. But hey, I know they got to make money with this rent control stuff. So I got 58 bucks with the 165. So I made about $224 by taking a trip to my P.O. box. And like I told you before, 76% of people are living paycheck to paycheck. I've just gotten my fourth paycheck beyond my regular paycheck. Now tell me, what kind of confidence would that build in you, man? You'd be strutting too, man. You'd be like, what's up, man? What's up? Knowing, hey, I don't have to buy my groceries with my credit card. I can go to Starbucks and leave a tip. And you know what a tip is? That's when you give a certain percentage for a person that gives you good service. And I know some of you like be kind of arrogant using your little iPhone stuff. Just give the person a tip. That person, that barista probably has more money in their pocket than you. I'd be seeing you guys at the with these beamers and stuff, you'd be going to Starbucks all scared to put a tip, like, did it, did it. We'll talk about that later. But like I told you before, have you just put the, put away $100 to $200 toward the end of the month, and then just before you get your paycheck, you depending on if you get paid once a month or twice a month, I want you to see the confidence you'll have when you look in there and you'll find extra money. For me, that's found money. I usually get paid one time a month on my regular job. But so far, this is my fourth paycheck that I've gotten this month. And da -da 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 I was trying to do the sounds for the Breeder Cup. So starting this Friday and Saturday, I'll be working at the Breeders Cup. And the people there pay $1,000 per table. It will be at Santa Anita and Arcadia. So I'll see if I'll make any tips or not. Even if I don't make any tips at all, I'm making about $12 an hour for eight hours. I work two hours of overtime at 18, so you do the math. I'm too tired to do the math. So that's about an extra $224. Then I claim one. So we're like an easy $195 check. Now if I happen to get some tips, which I'm not depending on, because tip things, sometimes they can be complicated. I'm just there, hey, if this person can pay $1,000 per table, for two days just to watch horses run, what can I learn from them? That's the reward. I, I should be paying them to be in their presence. There's about 500 guests, six settings per table. So that's about, uh, I hate trying to do math, about 80, 80 something, 80 tables. So that's 80 tables times 1,000. So I don't know, it comes out to... 80 tables, $8,000, no, 80, like 80,000, it's like $80,000 per table. And the drinks are gonna be about, like, I'll be going up to them, I'll say, uh, would you like to start off with the Breeders' Cup, would you like to start off with the Breeders' Cup specialty cocktail? Tory Cup, Garland, Blood Orange, Old Fashioned, old, or American Mule. So those are the sponsored ones and they get a free, free little drink. And then there are some other ones, Tito Handmade, Vodka, and you make some other ones. So my goal though is I want to like go up there. Hello, my name is Martin. Would you like to start off with a specialty Breeders' Cup cocktail? Tory Cup, American Mule, Garland, Blood Orange, Old Fashioned. Those are the only two things I'm gonna say because I'm gonna assume the 50 separate percent clothes that I learned listening to Greg Cardone that these people have already did their research, they looked at the menu, and they're like, okay, we're gonna be there for two days, and it's like a big event, so I'm sure I'm gonna say, hey, let's see if they're gonna have fun or not. So my goal is just to make it easy for them, 
Then give rid of all the emotion, like, hey, you don't have to treat me any kind of way. I remember in the old days, my people, we used to serve him, man. I, I got no problems, man. I, I worked one event, I'd be a trash for like eight hours. I thought, hey, man, I'm going to be like a server. I was going to be like a brand ambassador. Homegirl said, all I need to do is keep the trash cans empty, go around to each table with the, tra with the trash bag, clean it up so at the end of the shift we can all go home early. I did that. They're like, man, we never seen anyone pick up trash like you did. I was like, you know what? I never had a time where I actually put that much effort into picking up trash in my lifetime either. So that makes two of us. But what that showed you, though, was like, hey, you know, whatever the task is, I put my mind to it. Doesn't matter. I got. I had to hustle like an immigrant. There are times where you're gonna, like I said, you're gonna be underpaid or overpaid. For some jobs I've done like these past few years, fast few months, I've been overpaid. I worked at Margarita Fun Run. Margarita Fun Run. I made about $85 and they helped me because I actually got to ask people for money. I got to stand and stop these cars from moving. It's like, I need $15 for you to park. They're like, who is this guy? I loved it. And then I had another one where I did like the uh, Donut run, and all I did was, okay, Martin, I thought, okay, this time I'm going to work the registration desk. I'm going to talk to the people like I did at the Margarita Fun Run. No, we just need you to make sure no cars come through this little area so the runners are safe. And I did that, and it was raining on me. And then once that was over, it's like, hey, you want to help make some extra money? Sure, you're paying cash. So then I went and helped pick up the help pick up the course and some other stuff. But I could have stayed a little bit longer, but I was just tired, man. I got I was in a rain, I was in a downpour, I was already sick, I had like a bad infection, and I was just directing traffic and helping to break down. I was like, I'm done, man. I had to go home. So and now like the jobs I worked this October is mostly I worked as a banquet setup person, a hot dog setup person. And then I did a lot of just helping break down the equipment from team play and move, which is fun because what they helped me do was help me get in front of people, generate leads. Hey, Martin, we like the service you got. Who should we call? I didn't just let them call anyone. I said, give me your number and I'll have them call you. So, hey, you can call us if you want. If not, we'll put you in the system and we'll keep calling you. So not only was I working, but hey, you know, the only way for me to keep working is to generate leads. It's like, it's not looking at my duty state and saying, hey, that's not my job. You know, you know if you, when you say it's not my job, where you end up? You end up under a bridge. Or you end up crossing the street like this homeless lady, I, or maybe she was not homeless or not, but she's crossing the street against traffic, you know, and then like wanting people to stop. And like, no. And then she got all the way across and said, well, no one killed you today, so now you can go back to your miserable life. And I, right now, I know people who make money or like making maybe at least a hundred grand who are just ungrateful for just what they have instead of just taking that as an investment and investing in themselves and doing more. They feel like entitled, like, hey, I should get this position. Hey, I should be in charge of you, even if I'm lazy and I'm doing nothing at work, sitting at my desk brooding and not contributing luckily like the union protects them but as you and i know there ain't many many unions left and so like i told you before it's like like these people like there's a fulfillment center where you're making 15 dollars an hour time 40 2400 that's only 1900 dollars ain't many places you're gonna live unless you take that money and reinvest it that's why I want you guys to join me. Join my group, man. Times are gonna get hard soon, man. Like I see all the trucks and stuff, all these warehouses hiring. I'm like, what are they hiring for, man? I, you already had your trucks here in Oct early October, and now you're hiring more people to do what, man? With these four dollars, four dollar thirty nine dollars, whatever, four thirty nine dollars to cents gas, my friends. I don't think there are gonna be a lot of people shopping, but. If you listen to me and follow some of my strategies, if you're working in these fulfillment centers, like I told you before, man, you got to plan for the worst. My friend in Calvin, Petavita Mode and Die, 40,000 square feet. It was a big warehouse, 40,000 square feet plus, ran 10 injection motors machines, CNC machines. I went door to door. 
I worked as a secretary in the office too, and then, hey, Martin, it's slow. Go work on the machines in the back. I go, well, I didn't, couldn't say, well, that's not in my duty statement. He's like, if not, I'd have, been, I'd have been at home. You know what I mean? Making no money. So there's always ways to make money, but then I had to take that money and reinvest it in me. I had to like learn some skills, learn how to deal with people. Like my book I'm buying, like ne the latest book I'm reading is called Never Split the Difference. Excellent book. One thing that book taught me was how to deal with my emotions. Because sometimes you think, hey, if you get upset with people, threaten people, then that'll help. Or you get upset while they're telling a voice. You have to do like they say. Everyone has a different definition of fear. I'm black, so my definition of fear may differ to someone who's white, who's different to someone who's Hispanic, different from an immigrant, different from someone who may just need money for a job and doesn't care what their boss does or what goes down. So I think it's an excellent book because it just helped me. Remove the emotions. Okay, what, is, what do I want to accomplish? Let me put this person in control and see if they can help me. Excellent book. So I didn't think I would go on as long because I thought I was tired when I sat down, but I keep, by looking at myself, I'm going to go to shave, I'm going to eat, start reading another page to split the difference and go back to practicing my script. Would you like a Breeder Cup specialty cocktail to start with? Tory Cup, Garland, Blood Orange, Old Fashioned, or American Mule? Talk to you later.